I'm Rick Barnes, Solution Architect at ITS Partners. In this video, we'll talk about some of the key improvements in the Deployment Solution 7.5. If you're a 6.9 customer, I hope you will see some of the features that you recognize and have been looking for. For 7.1 customers, this video will demonstrate clear product improvements that can be realized with an in-place upgrade of your current solutions. If you are evaluating Alteris and are not currently a customer, I hope this video demonstrates the investment that Symantec is making into this product suite that the deployment solution continues to improve with each revision. This will not be a technical deep dive today, but simply provide what I feel are some good reasons to implement ITMS 7.5. All right, reason one is control of experience. So who wouldn't like greater flexibility and control over their deployment process? This will be illustrated through the Pixie menu configuration comparisons of 7.1 and 7.5. Reason 2. Reliability. If you are a 7.1 customer, you may find that your NetBoot or Pixie services need to be restarted too often. This results in interruptions in the deployment process. The primary reason for this is the dependency on SBS files. These don't exist in 7.5. Number three. 7.5 is simplified, and who doesn't want things to be simpler? I'll use a couple of examples to illustrate this, one of which is the, the task, server, task service requirements for deployment site components has been removed. Interoperable. So what do I mean by that? The native functionality of DS7.5 is going to work with more devices, more operating systems. I'll illustrate this with the WinPE WinPE update to 4.0. Reason 5. New features. I've been asked by several DS69 customers about a feature known as Close Match. Close Match is included in 7.5 and we'll demonstrate this in this video. Control of experience. Notice on the left that the 7.1 Pixie configuration is rather limited. Only predefined and unknown computers are accounted for. There's no way to adjust the time that the Pixie menu displays. In 7.1, the menu will only appear for 3 seconds, which is rather quick and is, this is not adjustable. On the right is 7.5, what is now called Network Boot Service Settings. Uh, notice the green bar at the top shows the different paths to these settings. The custom message prompt, the time to show the prompt, and the response can all be adjusted individually for unknown, predefined, and managed computers. This is only a sample of the granular control that's provided back to the Symantec Platform Administrator. So reliability. In, in 7.1, each site server houses SBS files. These contain instructions for how it should respond to each Pixie request. Uh, this file-based method often results in more frequent Pixie restarts to get the response you want. In 7.5, the response for Pixie requests is determined by a web service on the notification server. I think of this as the site server handing over play calling responsibility to the notification server, who's sitting in the booth with a better view of the field. This change will result in a more reliable and predictable Pixie response. Simplified. The top picture here is a grid view result of a PowerShell command. It returns specific properties for all service, services with Alteris in the path name. Notice the top one is from 7.1 and there's a filter applied that shows only the four NetBoot services. So the bottom grid view window is all services on a 7.5 site server with Alteris in the name with no filters. So notice there are only two NetBoot services and there are no task services. The add remove services window to the right shows how the network boot service can be configured via site management through the same method as the other site services. With half of the boot services and no task service requirement your deployment architecture will be simpler and more stable. Interoperable. 
Notice the OS name in the rear screen contains Longhorn. WinPE version 2, native to 7.1, is Vista base. This means that critical Vista compatible drivers are required for use with WinPE 2. Today vendors don't commonly supply Vista compatible drivers with their new hardware. In 7.5, WinPE 4.0 is native. As you see, this is Windows 8 based. Not only will compatible drivers be ready, readily available for new hardware, but DS75 supports imaging U UEFI based computers as well. This video will not cover Mac imaging, but native Mac imaging is a huge testament to the interoperability of 7.5. Now, let's look at some new features. So, notice that not only can predefined computers be added individually now with 7.5 but name is the only mandatory field. In 7.1 both a name and a MAC address were required to predefine a computer. So here is the console view of a free predefined computers with name only. When an unknown computer boots into WinPE this list is shown. This allows you to select a computer name for your new device. When you select a computer name, notice that the status change, uh, the status field changes and displays the name and GUID of the selected resource. The confirmation prompt is shown next, still allowing the initial deployment menu. The default behavior is to continue. Notice in the enhanced console view that the masonry resource name now has the IP and MAC address of the computer that is still in WinPE. There are no mini names. And speaking of mini names, for new computers in 7.5, computers created from an automation boot will be named their serial number by default. A couple of other notable new features in 7.5 is the ability to do MAC address filtering and the support of HTTPS, which is not included in 7.1. I hope this has helped to identify a few good reasons to upgrade or install ITMS 7.5. If you have any questions regarding the IT management suite from Symantec, please feel free to call us or send us an email. Thank you for your time.